get ready to experience the Changing Earth audio drama, brought to you by an incredible lineup of podcasters and survivalists from across the country, including listeners like you. Day After Disaster I'm not myself, but I don't need help. An extreme darkness penetrates the blackened bomb shelter as Erica Moore regains consciousness. She lies trapped in a pool of broken wine bottles underneath the wine cabinet. Why doesn't anyone come? What the hell is going on out there? Damn, this thing is heavy. Okay. Thank The milk crate. If I can just find it. Okay. I got it. If I can just... All right. Now push it up. Okay. It's in. It's holding the weight. Now, if I can just rock it this way. I can pull my legs up. Oh, damn, that leg hurts. Well, if I could just wiggle. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> Guess I'm stiffer than I thought. I'm just going to stay here for a minute. Slower this time. Damn, I stink. I can't believe this. How about some light? That's better. Thank God for this candle. Am I okay? It's not too bad. At least the cut on my leg isn't too deep. Nothing's broken. Some gnarly bruises. Minor cuts from the glass. No redness growing around the cuts. I'll heal. What the hell am I doing just sitting here? <laughs> I'm in here! Someone help me! Can you hear me? I'm in here! Hello! Help me! Help me! I'm in here! turn on the lights no of course not I'm never going to get out of here think think my phone what the heck where's the ringtone Searching for service? It always worked in here before. Come on, find a signal. What the hell is going on? Why is this happening to me? <sighs> okay, calm down. Just wait for it to find a signal. And try again. It has to work. Mm. I need a cigarette. Oh, I got it! The emergency button! What the hell? It should always work. Ah! Casey's purse is over there. I wonder if her phone will work. Really shouldn't get into her things. Oh well, she'll understand. Here it is! 
nothing. T.J. Swenson flees the city of St. Louis with his most trusted companions, Mr. Lee, Chuck Laudner, Serge, and Yuri. Yuri cradles Mr. Lee in his arms. What's this place like where Mr. Lee told us to go? Watch out for that sand blow. The ground is not supposed to shoot loud like that. It's like a geyser of dirt. This is crazy. Did you see the building in the city? It went up two stories higher than where it was before the lake had formed out of nothing. Where are we going? It's a small town to the southeast of Kansas City, Missouri. Mr. Lee owns a subdivision there. He's rented out some homes for income. We've got to take a break, TJ. Look at Mr. Lee. No. We need a doctor. One of these people has to be a doctor. We need some water. That home over there, only half of it was blown in half by that last sand blow. There's a guy in there. He's not a threat. What are you doing in my house? We need water, and my father is hurt. The kitchen was demolished. My wife... My wife is dead. Where's your hot water tank? Over there. Yuri, look in the trash outside. Find as many bottles as you can. I'll start with the ones we had. I was at the clinic trying to save those people. No one saved my wife. I should have been here. You're a doctor? I was, when my life had purpose. Now I just want to be with her. I know your pain, sir, but you have to look at Mr. Lee. Come on. Oh, his leg is busted. Probably in shock. Do something. Grab me that kid inside the door. Hold his upper leg tightly. Hand me that splint and all those ace bandages. Okay, here we go. You ready? Ready. It's going to be okay, Robert. We found a doctor. Good son. Now we wrap him up. I got the water. Have one of your boys find me two sturdy poles. Yuri, you heard the man. You got it, TJ. Help me put him in the sleeping bag. We have to keep him warm to stop the shock. You got it. Here's the poles. Wrap the duct tape around the poles in the sleeping bag. You can use it as a terroir. It'll be more comfortable for him to travel that way. He's looking better already. At least his color's returning and he stopped shaking. We better keep moving then. There's too many people fleeing. We want to stay ahead of that crowd. You are more than welcome to join us, Doctor. Looks like we're leaving. Let's go, Serge. Yuri. Doc, you coming? I don't have a better offer right now. Then let's go. After a risky but successful landing on the lake, the passengers from the plane gather on the shoreline. What are we going to do now, eh, Burgess? I have to report to Mr. McClintock with my team. So that's it, then? Look around, sir. Nothing I can do will even dead this chaos. I need to get my team to our destination. It was nice traveling with you. Safe journey, my friend. It was wrong leaving them there like that. We have a responsibility to get to our designated assignment. I think we should stick to that plan. I agree with Burgess. We came this far. We might as well complete the mission. But Claytop will know if my family is still alive. And a way to get me back there. 
What are we standing around here for then? You've gone awfully quiet, Monroe. What's your thoughts? I don't make the orders, sir. I only follow. Then let's move out. We need a vehicle if we want to make it there anytime soon. Get out your map. Where's the rental yard? Do you think there'll be anyone there? No, but a vehicle will be. It's this way, sir. You heard the man. Let's move out. PA, Monroe, you're on point. Men navigate the burning city of Minneapolis, headed for the Enterprise Rena car line. It's just around this bend. Eyes on the big boys over to the lift. I see them. Let's just stay our course and get a vehicle. The trucks are over this way. Four wheel drive? Might as well be. Chappie, you're at the wheel. Please enjoy a quick word from our sponsors. Hey everyone, this is Dale and Lisa from SurvivalistPrepper.net. I played the voice of Laudner. And I played the voice of Carol and Star. Over at Survivalist Prepper, we have the podcast, and I also have a new podcast that I'm doing with Brian Duff called The Duff and Dale Show. And you can find me on my YouTube channel, The Budget Equestrian. Hi, this is Sarah F. Hathaway, the creator of the Changing Earth series and the voice of Erica Moore. Visit ChangingEarthSeries.com to explore the novels behind the drama and the survival knowledge behind the stories. Join the Changing Earth membership program and get one week early access to the show. We appreciate you helping the Changing Earth world go round. Visit us at www.changingearthseries.com. That's www.changingearthseries.com. Hello everyone out there in internet radio land. This is Dave Jones, the NBC guy. And have I got a deal for you. Everybody that listens to Sarah's audio drama gets a special deal from me on Mira Safety Products. These are top quality protective gear used by armies around the world. You can only get that deal by emailing me at nbcguy at protonmail.com. I'm quite concerned about what's coming next. Personally, I think we'll probably see food shortages and other disruptions. Are you prepared if things go wrong? Does your family have enough food and supplies on hand to last at least 30 days? If not, the time to prepare is right now. Don't wait another minute. To help you on your journey, I recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the leaders in self-reliance, and they have a four-week supply of emergency food that lasts up to 25 years in storage, so you never have to worry again. Don't put your family through the pain of hunger or standing in government food lines. Go to preparewithchangingearth.com today and your emergency food will be shipped quickly and discreetly to your door. Those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. So visit preparewithchangingearth.com, the original Patriot Preparedness Company. Their mission is your survival. That's preparewithchangingearth.com. And now back to the Changing Earth audio drama. The candle flickers as Erica sits at the table eating nuts and fruit. At least there's food and clothes in those cabinets. Wish there would have been warm water to clean with, but at least I'm clean. I'm losing it, talking to myself. I wonder how long I've been down here. I've read all the books in those cabinets. Must have been days so far. Who knows how long I spent pinned under that wine rack. What happened out there? The quake must have done some big damage. It was the biggest one I ever felt. If I would have waited to be rescued from the wine rack, I would still be there. I got myself out. Bet I can figure out how to get out of here.
Maybe if I were to sit down on the floor, I could pull the door handle and push with my legs. I moved it! What the heck is holding it shut? If I weren't so short, I could push it all the way open. Maybe if I got one of those chairs. Screw the chairs. I'll bring the table. myself in between it and the door. Okay. Here goes nothing. It's working! It's working! What the hell? Water! It's flooding the cellar! Oh, it burns! The men continue their trek to Lee's summit. We've been walking for days, TJ. We have to take a break. We'll rest when we get there. I can't rest in the chaos anyhow. Maybe you can't, but I sure can. Hey man, I'll take that water you guys are carrying in those bags. We don't want any trouble, mister. Put your gun down. You put the water down and I'll... <laughs> Sheila's got this. I got him. Get that gun. We're creating a scene. Leave him. We need to keep moving. The men continue on, alert to danger. Large crowds flee the city, and wary homeowners stand guard over their homes. Another day of walking commences before they approach the gate of Lee's Summit. Who are you? Watch where you're pointing that shotgun, mister. Mr. Lee owns this property. Who are you? Mr. Lee does own this property. My name's Trent Erickson. I'm one of his runners. Where is he? He was injured in the quake. He's the one on the Travoy. Ah, oh, crap. His home is over there. It took damage, just like the rest. But we've kept everyone away from the bunker and secured the neighborhood from looters. This is Mr. Lee's son, TJ. He can help you with your security needs after we get some rest. Understood. Let me carry Mr. Lee for you. Paula, man the gate. Yes, sir. It looks worse than it is, and the bunker is intact. But I don't know the code. I do. Now we're talking. You stock food, water, first aid equipment, and weapons. Let me get him on the bed. We're in business. Mr. Lee always takes care of you. Don't you ever forget that. I never will. Please enjoy a quick word from our sponsors. Are you worried about how dangerous the world has become in these days of terrorist attacks, natural disasters, or even a future collapse? You need to be medically prepared to keep your family safe. I'm Joe Alton, MD of store.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find an entire line of uniquely designed medical kits and supplies for when help is not on the way. For everything from individual first aid kits to the ultimate family medical bag, go to store.doomandbloom.net today. You'll be glad you did it. Prepper Broadcasting Network is nine dynamic hosts, seven podcasts a week, live shows, chat rooms, daily updates, all on prepping, survival, and patriotism. Visit PrepperBroadcasting.com for your dose of self-reliance and independence. Hi, this is Jane Austen, otherwise known as Survivor Jane, and the voice of Dolores Chapman. I'd like to invite you to my website, SurvivorJane.com, where I write in a conversational tone on topics of how better to prepare yourself and family. You can also find links to my books, What Could Possibly Go Wrong? 
Emergency Survival Hygiene, and my game book, Puzzling Over Preparedness. You can also find information on Prepper Camp, the largest three-day preparedness event in the country every fall, hosted by myself and my husband, Rick Austin. Disaster Coffee is fueling disaster relief in America. Our coffee is roasted to order and shipped to your front door. You cannot get it any fresher. Visit DisasterCoffee.com and caffeinate with a purpose. That's DisasterCoffee.com. And now back to the Changing Earth audio drama. Cole Virgis stands with his team in front of a canvas tent. Mr. McClintock emerges from the folds into the smoky air. Mr. McClintock, sir. Nice to see you made it safely. All of you. It was interesting landing, sir. The PA is concerned about his family in California. Have you had any news, sir? I hate to be the one to tell you. The feds have decided we can't expend resources on California. All traffic in and out is being diverted to the emergency FEMA camp in Las Vegas. The tsunami already took out the coast, and the rest of this state is being annihilated by the quakes and volcanic activity. I'm sorry, LaPere. Sorry, my ass. My family could have survived. LaPere, that's no way to address the superior. I understand your frustrations. Why don't you take a few minutes and cool off? You men find a tent. Get some rest. Burgess, come with me. Yes, sir. The two men enter the tent. A boy is resting on a cot. Cole, you remember my son Johnny? Yes, sir. Nice to see you again, Johnny. Hello, Mr. Burgess, sir. Johnny, can you give us a minute here? You got it, Pops. I wish that boy would learn some respect. You have any kids, Virgis? No, sir. I love to fight too much. I was on the road too often to settle down. Smart move. My wife... She... She didn't make it. I'm sorry, sir. That's why I can understand LaPere's frustration. Virgis, the situation is dire. I've been in contact with other major defense contracting companies. The plan is to band together. We can assist the government with reorganizing the entire country. Sounds like a plan to me, sir. What do I have to do about LaPierre? James Merkley's company is in Nevada. Tell LaPierre we'll have Merkley send a team towards Sacramento. But Virgis. You saw what happened. The people of California have had no assistance. Society is deteriorating there quickly. I'll let them know you're doing all that you can. Thank you, sir. Go and get some rest. You've earned it. Erica lies on the table by the door, staring at the candlelight dancing on the toxic sludge that filled the shelter below. A few empty five-gallon water jugs float in and out of her vision. If only I could ride on top of that jug. I could float out of this sludge. No one is ever coming to get me. How would they know I survived? How would Vince know? Wait a minute. Maybe I can. The water delivery guy was going to come tomorrow. One, two, three. There must be at least ten of them. But how could I sit on them without getting wet? I need a base for a rack. The table! Mm. 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 Now I need to fish them out. I need a long pole. Hmm. 
Long pole. I got it. The pole for the chandelier duster. I can use this fork. Put a bend in it like this. Perfect. Now I tape it to the end of the pole. All right, let's try to hook the handle of that jug. I got it! How do I pick it up? Cleaning gloves. I got it! Let's put it up there. All right, on to the next. Oh, bam! That drip went down my glove. Water. Get some water. Okay, that sucked. New gloves and duct tape. I'll tape the gloves to my shirt. No drops will get in then. Before long, Erica had all of the jugs collected. After using cellophane to wrap the jugs to the tabletop, she secured it with duct tape. The final touch was utility bins. She devised from the milk crates. Her craft prepared, she was ready to test it in the water below. That drop burned. Can't ride on the raft without getting wet. Hmm. Cellophane and duct tape. Well, it's better than nothing. Pleased with the suit and vessel, Erica navigated the depths below collecting supplies. After grabbing what she could make use of, she readied herself for her escape. Hope this suit holds. Now if I wedge in here, should be able to pull on the handle. Now quick, on top of the raft. I did it! Thank you God, I did it! Please enjoy a quick word from our sponsors. Hey everyone, this is Phil Rabelais from the Matter Facts Podcast, voicing the role of Cole Virgis. If prepping guns and politics sounds like your cup of tea, come check out the Matter Facts Podcast every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify with my co-host, Andrew Bobo. L. Douglas Hogan here, doing the voice of Swinson. You can also hear me on all major podcasting platforms at The Rising Republic. I'm also on YouTube, The Rising Republic Video Bites. I'll see you guys over there, and you have a marvelous day. Ben Branham here with the Modern Self-Protection Podcast. I do the voice of Gunnery Sergeant Ben Nickleton. The Modern Self-Protection Podcast is a podcast that's dedicated to keeping you safe in today's modern world. It's a weekly podcast where we get together and talk about tips, tricks, equipment, gear, and an overall mindset to keep you safe. If you're interested in firearms and self-defense, you're going to love this podcast. Go check it out at ModernSelfProtection.com. And now back to the Changing Earth Audio Drive. Swenson approaches Mr. Lee's bunker. The guards at the door kneel to Swenson. Mr. Lee takes note as he arrives out the door. Are you sure you're ready for this? Stop your fussing, TJ. You've had me cooped up in there for months. Walk with me. Tell me what you've been up to, son. We have the neighborhood fortified and locked down. The military is rounding up the refugees and so am I. We're sending out squads to gather people and supplies from neighboring cities and communities. Population reduction is not a bad thing at this point. With the surrounding resources gathered in one spot, I can ration them out to the survivors until the gardens start producing. The guards kneel to you. They do. You must have earned their respect. The FEMA board has taken control. The president and vice president were killed. A man named Colonel Nicholas Henderson is heading up the operations until further notice. From what I hear, the coastlines were obliterated, and oil production is at a standstill. There's a lot to be done, and preventing war between the refugees and landowners is top priority. The capital was moved to Kansas. I'm impressed, son. I'm impressed with how you have taken charge, and I'm impressed with what you are building. But I am not impressed with your training facility. If you're feeding these people, you might as well be training them to be a part of your army. They're your army, Mr. Lee. 
I built all this for you. Nonsense, son. You will answer to me as you have always done, but they will answer to you. They will continue to do so. I'll live here. You build me a training center, and I'll train your fighters. You took the reins, son. I train you to be this man. I won't let you down. Cole Burgess stands stiffly in front of the desk of General McClintock. The room is inside a plastic building that resembles a large pill. It's been two months, sir. Colonel Merkley still hasn't given the PA a thing. Major Burgess, you know we've been busy here. We finally have the factories built to produce these homes. And we're producing medications for those in need. The satellites are our next big focus. Since they were all smashed with a lack of power or signal, once we have the satellites back up, we can do more surveillance. Parisha, speak freely, sir. Of course. You always have it. I don't trust Colonel Merkley. I don't think he ever sent a team. Cole, you know traffic in and out of California was shut down? They've been alerted at the border. Why can't I take a team out there myself, then? <laughs> because I need you here. We have to get the northern region rebuilt. I promise, in time, I will send you out into the Badlands. But I've been invited to go to the new capital in Kansas to meet with General Henderson. We need to have a united front to assist with the rebuilding of the nation. I have the gang activity slowed. All efforts are underway to rebuild the community centers. And what about the refugees? We're still rounding them up for factory labor. It's going to take time, sir. That's exactly why I need you here. These people just lost everything. I want them treated with dignity and respect and you're the only one I can trust to maintain that standard amongst these fighters. Plus, I have a personal request. What's that, sir? My son Johnny is staying here. I need to focus on business. He will be at the Mercenary Academy during the day, but can you assist with his care outside of those parameters? I, uh... You know I don't have any children, sir. Of course. But you are the only one Johnny trusts. And you two get along so well. This is not an order, Virgis. It's a personal request. I can do that, sir. However, when you get back, I want to take a team to the border and see for myself what is going on out there. That is my request, sir. Okay. Tell the pair, in two weeks, when I get back, you are authorized to take your team west to survey the situation. Thank you, sir. Your boy will be in good hands. I would expect nothing less. Let's try to have three more rural communities up and running by the time as well. Now that Minneapolis and St. Cloud are online, I think that can be taken care of. Good. I'll let Elena Porter from South Dakota, Grayson and Trace in North Dakota, and Julieta Blanchard in Wisconsin know that you are their point of contact. These are important people. You got their names? Yes, sir. And you've already had my team study their files. Don't worry. I'll hold the fort down, sir. Thank you, Cole. I'm glad I have you to count on. And I'll eagerly await the news from the Capitol. Thanks for stopping by and listening to the Changing Earth audio drama. Hope you enjoyed the adventure. This content is copyrighted in 2021 by author Sarah F. Hathaway. For a list of performers, music, and noise attributes, head on over to www.authorsarahfhathaway.com backslash changing earth that's www.authorsarahfhathaway.com backslash changing earth special thanks to zapsplat freesound.com and freemusicarchives.com 
for all the work that they do, providing great resources for free music and sounds. Without them, this project would not be possible. Much love to all of my volunteer performers who put hours in designing the characters that you love. We'll see you next time on the Changing Earth Audio Guide.